Hi, I'm Bo. Now we've got a bit of a temporary install here, but don't let all that craziness get to you. All you really need is a battery power connection, ignition power, ground, plug into your OBD2 port, and then you can start getting data. We've got our OBD channels coming in. Now let's go ahead and sort through the list and pick which channels we actually want to data log. We'll start off by choosing engine coolant temperature, the intake manifold pressure, engine RPM, vehicle speed, intake temperature, and we'll go ahead and pick fuel rail pressure and scroll down a bit look for engine oil temperature and accelerator pedal position. Now that last one, accelerator pedal position, will tell us exactly what the driver is doing with his foot. Now once we've done that, we can go ahead and pick a logging rate for all these channels. Now with OBD2, you get three choices for logging rate, a slow, medium, or fast rate. And the actual sample rate of each of those selections will depend on how many channels you're actually logging. And you can see that actual data rate by looking at the top of the screen here. And you'll see if you choose fast, currently it's 500 hertz, medium is 56 hertz, and slow is 1 hertz. The slow is useful for things like temperatures that do not change very suddenly, so coolant temp, air temp, oil temp, things like that. For pretty much everything else, you can use your medium logging rate. If you really want something that's very, very high speed, maybe engine RPM, or if you're looking at oil pressure, things like that, you may choose a fast sample rate. We've got our channel set up. Let's go and actually set up the AQ1 to start data logging. First thing we're gonna do is go to the top and click on input channel overview. And under logging condition, we're gonna pick which condition or which channel we wanna to use to actually trigger the AQ1 to start data logging. In this case, we can pick OBD2. We can either use engine RPM or vehicle speed. I'll go ahead and pick engine RPM and we'll say engine RPM is greater than pick 500 and we'll click save. And what that's going to do is actually start data logging uh, all your channels as soon as the engine starts up. That way you don't have to worry about switching the AQ1 on manually and forgetting it as you go on track. It's going to be automatic every time the engine runs. We're getting a lot of really cool data from this car over OBD2, but as you grow and you want to start adding more sensors, you can add things like say oil pressure shock positions, and that way you can have all of your data from OBD2 along with your additional sensors that you've added all in one place with the OBD2 AQ1. The last thing we're going to show you is how easy it is to take a data log and import it into our AEM data analysis software. got our log, now we're going to go ahead and download the log and open it with an AEM data. So the first step is to take your USB uh, plug and plug it into the laptop. As soon as you do that, the software is automatically going to detect the USB and it's going to start downloading the data log. You can see here that it's completed. We'll click OK. Now we'll go ahead and launch AEM data analysis software. And we can click on this little icon here, which is an open log icon. Go ahead and find that file we just downloaded. You can double check to make sure that the date and time is correct. And once you've opened the log, you can see it's all blank here. There's no channels being displayed. All of the channels that were day log are all on the right side, but all you have to do is click on one and just simply drag it over to which lane you want it to be in. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on OBD RPM and we're gonna drag it to the top lane. So now we get our RPM trace. You can see these are the three times that I rev the engine. And I'll drag over the manifold pressure into this plot. We'll drag engine coolant temperature and engine oil temp into the lower lane since those are things that we're not really looking at as often. And we'll also drag battery voltage down to the bottom. And let's go ahead and add fuel rail pressure to that middle lane. And once you've done that and you've got it set up just how you want, you can go ahead and go to File, Save Project As, and that way the software will remember not only the uh, layout of all the channels that you're logging, but also the colors and the vertical ranges and just the overall look and feel of how you have your software configured.